Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Uh, you find me in uh, unfamiliar surroundings and definitely unfamiliar territory. I'm here with Paul Leverett yes. from UK Piano Restorations. Piano Restoration UK Limited. That's the one, the other way around. Um, and I've just had, and you will soon have, probably one of the most fascinating tours you'll see on PTE this year. Um, thanks for inviting us. Oh, my pleasure. Um, and just tell me a little bit about, about yourself. How did you get into restoring pianos? Uh, basically, it's all my dad. Um, my dad's been in the trade 60 years. Um, and then I stepped in when I was 18. So I've been in 20 years now. Um, and that's just something that sort of, I suppose, was in the blood. I was bound to do it. <laughs> But we met via a mutual DJ friend, because you're also um, seri seriously into DJing and a yeah. club DJ, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we met a mutual friend on the social media. Um, and DJing is my passion, but you know, music and pianos are in my heart, so I suppose it was always going to happen. So it's, it's all good. So um, tell us a little bit about the company. What's, what's the kind of ethos? Obviously, piano restorations, no um, awards going to be given to um, anyone working out what you do. Yeah. But... Um, but what's the, tell us a little bit about the process. How, how, do, how do people come to you? How do people find you? What, what sort of work do you take yeah. on? Basically, we're looking at pianos that are kind of about 100 to 125 years old, and they need full restoration. By this, we mean a new soundboard, new rest plank. They're the integral parts that keep a piano in tune, in tone. So that's why people come to us, because we're the only people who do this major work. So as we go round, what we'll do is we will... Uh, cut in to Paul telling us a bit about what you're seeing, um, seeing the work that's currently going on, the state that the pianos come in. Um, and it's fair to say that you primarily work with the higher end of the piano market. Yeah, basically the, the sort of top four or five makes in the world are the ones that we're looking at. You can at. drop names, it's all right. Yeah, it's sort of Steinways, Bluthner, Bosendorf, Beckstein, uh, even Yamahas, you know, still need rebuilding from time to time, so... But you're after a very specific, you're not after that kind of modern sound, you're after no. a much more, should we say, historically accurate or richer yeah. sound? No, we're, we're trying to produce a pre-war tone. You know, early pianos are known for more of a melodic, more of a mellow, warm tone, and that's what we're trying to achieve with each restoration. So as we go round, we're going to see pianos in different states of repair and disrepair. Yeah. Um, and... Paul's going to tell us exactly what we're seeing and as we go through uh, what work's being carried out. Um, it's fair to say, if you've got a, a Joanna at home and you're thinking, I fancy that, it's fair to say, I think, it's not work that, you, that, that should be undertaken by the, um, should we say, the less well-heeled? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a fairly expensive process, but when you see exactly what goes on, I think, like I have been on the sort of brief tour I've had so far, it's impressive, and the, the attention to detail is spectacular. Yeah, without doubt. And, and the investment of what you're putting into the piano, if you had to buy the new model, you're absolutely quids in. You know, you, you'll spend probably an eighth of the money you would to buy a new piano of that, of that same model. But you're also of the opinion that actually the new ones aren't as good as the older ones? Uh, still amazing instruments, don't get me wrong, but the tonally, I prefer the more older pianos, the pre-war up to kind of 1936 pianos, uh, uh, for me, have more heart and soul than a more modern piano. So at this point, let's go into the workshop. Uh, you will hear works going on. That's why we've got these rather than tie clips. Uh, they'll be tuning, they'll be spraying, they'll be cutting, all the sort of woodworky type stuff you expect. So um, try and ignore that and um, hone in on exactly what we're seeing and being shown because this stuff is fantastic. Okay, so we've come into the workshop now and this is piano number one on the tour. This is the, the well, t Paul, tell us what we're seeing. Uh, this is a typical sort of condition of a piano coming in. Um, if your piano has a soundboard that looks like this with a splits going through it, it, you need a full restoration, it needs a new soundboard. Um, dust is obviously just dust, everyone's going to have that, but it's the soundboard is the most integral part, and if yours is split, it definitely needs re rebuilding, needs replacing. So for those of us who are um, not necessarily familiar with the internal workings of said piano, just let us know what we're seeing. Obviously, this is 
stripped down to its yeah, barest this is state? Or? No, not at the barest state. This has had the strings taken off, the frame taken out. Um, this part here is called the pin block or rest plank. This is what the tuning pins get hammered into. And this part here is obviously your soundboard and your bridge. Okay, so this is a piano in its most naked state? Yes, definitely. This has had the soundboard taken out, the rest plank, pin block taken out. Um, these are the bracings, the bare shell of a piano. Uh, from here, we will then rebuild, starting with the soundboard and the pin block. This one's had the casework refinished, so this one's gone back to a deep mahogany finish. So, uh, what are we seeing? What, what, what are those? They look like they're, they're the dead ones. Yes, these are the samples that have been taken out of the piano's need for rebuilding. These have either lost their crown, so all samples should be crowned, should be convex, so they should be domed in the middle. Once they've lost that dome, you'll lose any quality of tone and resonance. So these ones are ready now to be copied, um, actually improved, and then we'll then put, put the new ones back. And is it fair to say that, that no two soundboards from two pianos are ever the same? No, never the same. Even two identical pianos, the soundboards will be slightly different because at that stage they were more hand-built, so each one's just slightly different. So what we're seeing now is, this is the new one, this yeah, is a new this one ready to go in. This is a copy of, of, one of the original. So this is a new Sitka spruce board with a tight grain Sitka spruce, all laminated together, and then perpendicular new ribs being glued on, shaped to the specific shape of each individual sort of manufacturer. So without giving too much away, and we're not gonna blow any trade yeah. secrets, you've got a very special process for making sure that yeah. when you put a new soundboard in, it's gonna stay domed and is gonna be as it should be yeah. for longer? Yeah, definitely. When we, when we get the original boards in, they're flat. But with our process and the way we, we make our boards and glue in the ribs on, we can crown it and keep the crown on the, on the soundboard, but keep it uh, natural rather than forced, which will then make it last another hundred years. Okay, Paul, so tell us what's happened to this one so far. Uh, this one, it's not having the casework done. It's having what we call all internals. So it's having a new soundboard and the bridge is recapped. That means the original bridges were split and the tuning pin, uh, the bridge pins were moving. So this one's been recapped in maple. At this stage, we're now setting back up everything and trying to get everything aligned. We're looking specifically for the height, the relationship with the bridge to the frame. So we're trying to get it the right height. So from here, we will now plane this to exactly the right height for the frame and it is individual to this frame um, and then the base bridge again will uh, align and will mark up so it's all in alignment so you're going to get the correct note every time. But at this stage as well this is still the iron frame in its, yeah. um, this its is original, original state. Yeah this is the original uh, iron frame as you can see it's discoloured um, on the next stage you will see where it has been sanded back re-gilded. So on this one, the frame has been re-coated? Yep, yep. Well, we re-gild the frame. So it's a, a bronze in lacquer and a gild that's mixed together to create the right colour. It's an individual colour to each manufacturer. And um, this one, as you can see, has had the new soundboard. This has been sealed and lacquered. And it's actually had new bridge cappings as well. As you can see from the other one without the pins, this has all been remarked out, drilled and, and in alignment. So each piano manufacturer of the top four or five have their own kind of frame colour? Yes, yeah, without a doubt. You know. And Beckstein being a more kind of a, a real goldy colour. Yeah, yeah. Was it Bosendorfer that's quite orange? Yeah, Bosendorfer's are quite an orange gold. And again, the uh, Steinways are a bit lighter gold. Um, and this is very much like a Bluesner gold. So yeah, they do all have their own characteristics. So what stage is this one at, Paul? Um, this has now been strung. So from the last stage, um, it'll get set up so the frame gets what we call dressed. So the correct amount of bearing is set up from the bridge to the frame. And then each um, section is then strung. And the, obviously the gauges of the piano string go from large gauge down to the smallest of about sort of 13. And uh, new bass strings are added, which are made by a company for us, by a company called EKA, the best string manufacturer there is. 
And this, is this the one that's having the special attachment? Yeah, this is having it? a self-playing system called a QRS system. Um, so it's got solenoids that fit underneath and basically you can f work it Wi-Fi from your phone and it will play anything, any genre, anything you want from Elvis Presley to Mozart. See, the purist in me is not happy about that, uh, but I suppose <laughs> the technologist in me... Yeah, it is clever because you can also... Um, have someone playing, say, in a competition in Japan um, and you're judging it in England and they could play the piano with the same system on in Japan um, but you could listen to them playing with the same amount of expression um, in London. So yeah, that's it's very that's clever. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, very clever. Um, it, it's the way forward, but, you know, I don't think it's for everyone. So we can see the keyboard and the key bed come out. I'll, I'm going to be the, be the microphone staff for now. Um, all the time the work's been carrying on elsewhere in the factory, um, the, key, the actual keyboard has been stripped completely. Um, this has had new bushings. Um, every action it gets what we call recentered. So there's a brass pin that runs through and also runs through the levers underneath. So they all get recentered. There's new hammerheads. These are arbor hammerheads. Um, which is very good for a blues and a sound. Um, the keys, every, well, these are the original ivory keys have been cleaned, buffed. Um, the ebony's have uh, been recoated. Um, everything has been done completely. Nothing's been left to chance. Um, and then from here, we then can actually regulate the piano, so we can set the, the key height correct, the depth of touch of the key height, uh, the height of the hammerhead. Um, everything follows a sequence so we can all finish at the same same place so it should always feel the same. The impressive thing of course is that obviously each key is slightly different but the, the process obviously has to happen 88 times. Yeah, it's exactly the same 88 times. You want the keyboard to feel as uniform as it can. You know, you don't want to be feeling it heavier here than it is here so there's leads that are added actually into the keys so each one should feel the same. Okay, so this one's pretty much in a, a ready-to-go state. Yeah, this one pretty much is finished. Um, you know, it's all been toned by that. We, we voiced the hammer, so putting needles in to even it up across the keyboard. Um, everything's stabilised. The tuning's now stabilised, and she's ready to go home. So roughly from someone or you getting a wreck of a piano to it going back out the door with your delivery guy, how long roughly? Um, it's about sort of three and a half to four months now with the amount of workload we've got on it's, it's that kind of time span. So it's fair to say a piano is not a piano is not a piano, is it? No, exactly. They are very, very individual. Um, this one's got a beautiful framework. Yeah, this one is a Bluthner style seven, so it's a six at three, um, but it's got what they call a Jubilee frame. Um, there's very few of these about um, in my father's 60 years this is the second one he's ever seen and he actually worked for Bluthners so uh, they're very rare but you can trace your your kind of training back can't you back to the original yeah yeah my, with my father working for Bluthners for nearly 50 years uh, he trained me and therefore we can trace our training right back to Julius Bluthner himself back in 1907 I think was around about when he died so Wow, so it, not only is it a family business, but you've got the lineage back to, yeah, back to, to the, the original... Um, maker, yeah, especially of blueness, So, Okay, it's fairly, fairly safe to say, I think, that it's a very labour-intensive oh, process. Without a doubt, the, the man hours are phenomenal. That's sort of a lot of what you're paying for is the man hours to, to rebuild a piano. Um, this actual keyboard's having a brand new set of ivory put on. So the ivory's been sourced authentically. You've got a certificate from where the ivory came from. There's a few manufacturers that you can still buy ivory from. Um, but this is one piece ivory um, that's been uh, first glued on, then cut to shape, routed on the front. Every corner has to be the right angle. Um, and now Tim is filing the, the, the cutout so the sharps won't, won't catch. So it's exactly the right tolerance levels. You mentioned in the last kind of shot um, about the authenticity of ivory. Now, obviously, um, we all know that ivory is um, tr should we say morally, morally and ethically grey at the yeah. moment, but there is an alternative. Yeah. Um, 
most people put back uh, acrylic, so it's a plastic, but it's, it sweats, it's not porous like, like ivory. Um, we get supplies this material called Taran by Clue Key Manufacturers are the best in the world. We're the UK agents. Um, this Taran is a mineralized plastic, so it's absorbent, it's slightly off-white, uh, so when it goes back, it is probably the, it is the best thing to ivory. It's no grain in it, you won't see a grain, but it will be porous, so you will have more grip than you will on just a normal plastic keyboard. So it actually feels like you're playing an ivory keyboard yes. without actually playing an yeah, ivory keyboard? it's the closest thing you can ever get. Does it discolour over time like ivory does? Uh, no, it will, it will keep it. It's slightly off-white and it will just stay that, that forever. So, Paul, it's safe to say that um, all the pianos that leave the workshop look stunning, sound amazing but sadly not all of them make it to their, no. um, their new home in one piece. You know, everyone's human, and unfortunately like, this piano that was going home, this is the lid from it, um, the carriers, you know, there was a, whether the, how it happened, I'm still not sure, but the hinge got ripped out from the underneath, and this is a brand new set of tops that were made for the piano. Um, so now we're gonna have to glue this back, special glues, really try and bond it back in, and then we're going to have to turn it over and recut back completely and respray the whole top again, and then it'll go back to the customer. So, But that's all part of your after sales and, and, and care service? Oh, without a doubt, all our pianos come with a five-year guarantee. If there's anything goes wrong, we're there immediately. Yeah, this was only delivered yesterday, and the piano lid's already back with us, and within two days, it'll be back to the customer again. So a piano is for life, not just for Christmas? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> So, Paul, thank you so much for the tour. Um, as I said before, probably some of the most interesting and, and certainly different stuff you'll see on PTE this year. Um, time for the plug. Just um, how, if people have got a piano that they want restored, but you also you also source pianos for people, don't you, as well? Yeah, definitely. We will rebuild um, sort of someone's piano that they'll come to us about, or we will source a certain make. So someone will come to us and want a certain certain Steinway, Bluthner. We will find that model, rebuild it, and give them back to literally showroom standards if it's come out of the factory. And they are spectacular. So plug time now. How do people get in touch with you and what's the website and all that yeah. sort of stuff? Uh, you can find us on www.pianorestorations.co.uk, um, on social media, through Facebook, on Piano Restorations. If you just type that in the header, we'll, you'll find us. Um, I think we're Piano Rebuild on Twitter and on Google. If you literally just put in Piano Restorations, you will find us. Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I hope to see you again soon and Brilliant. all the best. Thank you very much.